Representative Presley, I'd like to turn the next question to you. Advancing equity requires institutionalized change. I think that's what Michael and Glenn were talking about. And indeed, it is the heart of the president's day one equity directive to the agencies. The agency plans announced and released today include commitments to executive actions in this vein, such as rulemaking and allocating more resources to civil rights offices. Legislation is also crucial for long-term change. What are the most crucial actions that Congress can take to support the commitments that agencies have made in their action plans and to strengthen the ability of agencies to produce greater equity for underserved communities across the country? That's right. I really appreciate your framing here, Sharad. The commitments rolled out here today are historic. Um, and so before I get into uh, uh, a more strident uh, response to your question, I just want to say it's important that we take a moment in the midst of our continued struggle for progress and equity to really acknowledge these meaningful wins along the way. It matters deeply that President Biden and Vice President Harris are in the White House. It matters that in the White House and across agencies, we have diverse staff calling the question, pushing the conversation, and moreover, tasked with implementing these plans. So who is at the table matters. And to your point, this esteemed panel and this event is not about declaring mission accomplished. It is about furthering and advancing the conversation and the work. You asked specifically what legislative efforts we continue to advance this agenda. Just as the administration has taken a whole of government approach, Congress must take a wide reaching approach. And these equity plans and the underlying data collected to develop them must be shared with Congress to continue our meaningful partnership. Now, I serve on the Oversight and Reform Committee, and in that capacity, the chairwoman and I have been working with the administration on implementing the president's day one executive order. We also want to ensure this executive order on advancing racial equity through agencies is not limited to one administration. The work that Ambassador Rice, Director Young, yourself, and others are doing to remove systemic barriers to federal resources and to provide equal access to underserved communities is valuable work that Congress must codify and continue. I appreciate the truth telling that has taken place uh, to us today because the fact of the matter is that uh, we have literally written inequity uh, into our laws. We have codified that. Uh, and so uh, we have an opportunity here to, uh, to write the course here and to quite literally write equity into law. And we must. And so my approach as a lawmaker continues to be that we must use this powerful governing moment to exact lasting change. And so that means advancing economic justice policy with a racial justice lens and a disability justice lens. Everything from the way we address contracting and procurement to putting forward long overdue high impact policies that redefine folks' relationship with government. Sherrod, some people think that widespread practices that shape the contours of the lives of black and brown families for generations, like redlining and discriminatory drug charges, were happenstance. And again, I appreciate the truth telling that's taken place throughout, throughout today here. No, the federal government played a precise role. And so now we have a chance to use that same attention to detail and precision to heal, empower, and advance. And these issues are connected. And we can use the power of the pen to shape a Federal Reserve that prioritizes full employment and legislative pr proposals like my federal job guarantee that will get us there. We can shape an SBA that always asks, what does this mean for small black business as the starting point, just like my Saving Our Streets Act with the former senator and now our vice president uh, Harris does. We can collect data to drive our policy making when it comes to disparate impacts of long COVID on our communities of color and direct HHS to take cues from disability justice leaders and scale up accessible care in hard hit communities. And we can legislate wealth building that addresses racial disparities like my baby bonds bill with Senator Booker. Policy is my love language. So I could go on for an hour about this, but in summary, we should approach each policy conversation as an opportunity to advance racial justice and equity, and the legislative proposals are, wait, are waiting, they are ready, shovel ready, and so I'm grateful to have partners in the White House to continue to press for progress.